fly. A new report from the Social Security Board of Trustees said that the current trajectory of the Social Security Fund will become insolvent by 2035 because it's drawing down faster than it can be replenished. Uh, look, this was a Ponzi scheme from the start, but now it's really bad. Last year, there was over a $40 billion deficit on that program. Th and this didn't sneak up on us. We've known this for decades. It's, it's unbelievable that we haven't done anything. But it's like the third rail of politics. Whichever party is in the minority, they criticize the other party for not doing anything about it, and then neither party does anything, and they just kick the can down the road. Republicans recognize that the life expectancy since the origins of Social Security has gone up by 16 years. So naturally, they say they want to raise the age. They, didn't, they never actually do it, though. Democrats, however, as always, just want to raise taxes on you to make up for the difference. But what they fail to realize is if you were to confiscate every dollar from every billionaire today, it still would not even remotely cover the $25 trillion in liabilities for Social Security over the next 75 years. But the real problem is there's not enough people working to pay the taxes to cover the people retiring. When Social Security was founded, there were 42 workers for every one recipient of Social Security. Now, there's three. Three workers for every recipient of Social Security. They're also living 16 years longer. Ever wonder why the federal government tells you not to eat eggs or not to eat steak or eat healthy or do your own research? This is stuff we've done for, I don't know, 10,000 years. Instead, they make us think that high fructose corn syrup and processed foods and seed oils and Lucky Charms or half the ingredients are banned in other countries are better for you than red meat and eggs. The federal government is raiding farms, selling raw milk, chicken factories are mysteriously burning to the ground, and farmers are being told to execute their cattle across the globe. The government needs you to die early. It's a conversation for another day, though. You, you want to know why I don't trust the government, folks? Social Security is literally the perfect example on a long list. Hear me out. If you saved the same amount of money mandated by Social Security working a median income job, by the time you're 67, you would have put away $600,000, give or take. Now, the federal government took that from you under the banner of Social Security withholdings. Now, if you had invested that money in a private brokerage account, earning, I don't know, like let's call average it out 5% a year, that money would be worth about $1.9 million today. Your annual interest today would return you $95,000 a year on that. That means you could draw $95,000 a year paycheck without ever having to touch your $1.9 million that you saved. The government didn't do that. Actually, they spent it, as it you know, comes back to some stuff, obviously, on tons of other stuff. So instead, after all your contributions paid in at the median income rate up to the age of 67, they will give you $3,000 a month, which comes out to about $36,000 a year. Thanks, guys. So the money I was forced to put in, that I gave to the government as an interest-free loan for 50 years, I get one-third of what I could have gotten if I had been in control of that money? Awesome, guys. And now the government is telling me that by the time I'm 55, that account is going to be completely insolvent. And I'm going to get even less, if anything at all, than the already criminally low return that I was promised, by the way. I was promised that money. I mean... Tell me with a straight face to trust the government after hearing that. This is why I hate them. And, and you know what I would love? I would love for just one Democrat to explain to me with a straight face why illegal immigrants breaking our laws are getting more benefits than my retired mother who maxed out her Social Security contributions for the last 50 years. Anybody? No? Didn't think so. And, and, and no one wants to fix it. Why? Because no one in D.C. wants to make tough decisions. Because they're worried that they're going to get thrown the hell out of office for taking all the money out of the Social Security Fund that they spent on whatever government pet projects they wanted for decades instead of investing it like they should have. Stephen Moore, Trump's senior economic advisor. Sir, this is a real problem, and I don't think enough people on Capitol Hill are taking it serious. So, uh, great, great monologue, and you had it exactly right. I, I agree entirely with everything you said, except maybe I think you might be overestimating, uh, you know, how much trouble Social Security is in. And we look, I've been working on this for 35 years. 
We've known this Titanic was going to hit the iceberg. This isn't a shocker. We know we turned baby boomers. You know, I just turned 64. I'm a boomer. There's, you know, 80 million of us. We knew we were going to retire. And Congress not only didn't do anything to save, to prepare for this, but you are exactly right. They stole the money. Congress stole over a trillion dollars from the Social Security Fund, and they used it for foreign aid and farm subsidies and all these, you know, welfare benefits. Uh, and can you imagine, by the way, if you were running a private company and what you did was raided the company pension fund, you know what would happen? Jail. They would come and they would put you in jail. And what I'm here to tell you, folks, is Congress has raided the trust fund and maybe we should put those people in jail. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. And, like, I, I ran the numbers for you. Well, what they've done is almost criminal. You know, in theory... If it was in, it was not invested at all, just your six hundred thousand dollars or whatever you've paid in, that allegedly is supposed to last you fifteen years. So sixty-seven, yep. that's in theory right. But the problem is, it's like you could get. Well, why don't they just transfer everything over to a a four hundred one k style? Yes. If you're under sixty years yes. old, we're transferring it over what the money that yes. it would have been, and then everybody else can have the traditional system, maybe. So, you know what? I've been arguing that for that for about 35 years. My, my good friend and colleague, Steve Forbes, remember he ran for president in the 1990s on this idea. Mm -hmm. And your numbers are pretty accurate. Uh, I have slightly different numbers, but they're close to yours. So let me, let me just take my own personal example, because, you know, I'm an upper middle income person. I've been working for 40 some years. I've, and the government has taken 12 percent of my paycheck, every paycheck I've received, mm -hmm. and, and they've taken it for Social Security. Now, if I had put that 12 percent in just an index fund, you know, not choosing stocks, just an index fund of all stocks, right. I would have probably closer to three to four million dollars in that fund. And even if you're a minimum wage worker your whole life, you'd have over a million dollars in that fund. I would be able to get, a, so I'm gonna get a benefit of about $2,200 a month for Social Security. Under under the 401k plan idea, I'd get a benefit of about $8,000 a month. And I wanna tell every young person listening to this show, not only that would you get a four times higher benefit, but you would also have a million dollars left over to save for, and give to your children as an endowment. Yeah. Why don't we do this? But that's the problem. It makes far too much sense. And we have the people, this is, we elect people like AOC, who is a bartender, and she's making financial decisions based on how big her TikTok following is. And that's why we're where we are, Steve. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, it would be invested in a safe, uh, you're right. The stock market is a good place to be. It always has been. As Albert Einstein said, that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Think about the compounding over 40 years. And, you know, the people have to really rally for this. I'm too old to get it. They've already stolen my money. But anybody listening to your show, if you're under the age of 45, you should be demanding this. Because, and by the way, every single American, think about this, and this is why the left doesn't want to do this. Every American, every American would be an owner. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? We'd be a nation of capitalists. Imagine that, where we would control our money. I mean, you don't get any better than that, Stephen Moore. I really wish you were back in charge of some of this stuff. <laughs> we're coming back, my friend. Just wait till November. <laughs> my man. All right, appreciate you joining me. Thank you.